Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tony Needs Hobbies. Lately I got interested in analog or film photography. I did some research online and found out that Canon didn't change their mount system much since the EOS introduction in the late 80s. Finding one of those early cameras would be very convenient since I am filming on a Canon EOS DSLR right now. That would mean I can use most of my lenses on the old film camera. So I strolled the online marketplaces and found this brand new looking Canon EOS 650 film camera. To check if it is light tight, I bought a few rolls of black and white film and shot them in my hometown. Then brought them to the lab to find out that they only develop color film. The local app does offer a service to send black and white film to another lab, but it comes at additional cost. So I figured I can develop the film myself. I bought materials, chemicals, and and in this video, I will show you how to develop black and white film. If you stay until the end, I will show you the pictures and we will find out if this camera still performs well after 30 years and if it doesn't leak light. Have fun watching. To prepare the developer and other necessary chemicals, I use the following materials. Measuring cups, storage containers, a small graduated cylinder and a thermometer, some stirring rods and of course the chemicals. The developer that I will be using is based on the aqua rodinol process. The chemicals will be used in the following order. First the adenol developer, then the addo stop stop bath, then the addo fix fixer and finally some addo flow wetter. All the solutions for this process need to be at 20 degrees Celsius. That's very convenient because that matches the room temperature in my living room. I will measure enough water at 20 degrees to mix up all the chemicals. The water where I live is very soft so that helps with uh, reducing the risk for drying stains. I will follow the exact instructions that came with the developing set that I ordered. I need to dilute 23 milliliters of the developer to 600 milliliters, which is just enough for two rolls of film. For the stop bath, 50 milliliters will be diluted to a liter and 100 milliliters of the fixer will be diluted to 800 milliliters. When mixed, the chemicals need to be kept at 20 degrees Celsius, which is the ideal processing temperature. The chemicals are right there maintaining their room temperature, so I finished the easy part. Now comes the difficult part, which is transferring the film into a light sealed processing container without exposing it to light, because then no image will be left on the film. The film will be transferred into this Patterson container. I will also use scissors, a canister opener and of course two rolls of exposed film. To be specific, Ilford HP5 plus 400 ISO black and white film. First I will practice a little bit blindfolded and with some disposable film to make sure that I'm able to do this inside the changing bag, which is a practical tool if you don't have a dark room, which I don't. The Patterson tank is light sealed but liquids can be poured into and out of the tank. The film needs to be taken out of the cans to be transferred onto these spools using a ratcheting mechanism after cutting off the leader. Then the spools are placed onto the center column and put into the tank so that it can be closed with the funnel shaped lid. Then it's safe again to turn on the light or take the tank out of the changing bag. Let's practice once more and then do it for real inside the changing bag.
Now that the film is transferred into the container, developing can begin. It's not difficult, but there are some things to take into account. I'm going to develop for 6 minutes and I will start with 30 seconds of slow, gentle agitation, followed by knocking the tank on the countertop so air bubbles will be released from the film. Then I let it sit for 30 seconds. Then agitate for 10 seconds, followed by letting it sit for 20 seconds. This 30 second cycle will be repeated until the 6 minutes are over. The developer will be poured out of the tank after which the stop path is added, agitated for 10 seconds and poured out again. Then the fixer will be added in the same fashion as the developer, 30 seconds of agitation, 30 seconds of waiting and then repeating the 10 second agitation, 20 second waiting cycle until 8 minutes are over. After every agitation the canister will be tapped on the counter to release bubbles just to be sure that the chemicals are in contact with the film. When this is done, the film will be rinsed with lots of water. You cannot overdo this. It is already safe to open the canister and take a look if everything went well. I have rinsed for around 15 minutes in running tap water. The developer has to be disposed properly, the fixer and stop bath however can be reused many times. I keep them in an opaque container with a label keeping track how often the solutions have been used. During rinsing there is time to store these solutions and clean up a bit. After that I prepared some demineralized water by adding a few drops of wetting agent. This makes sure that water slides off of the film when it is hung up to dry. That prevents drying stains. In the end I had a few of those but they were easily removable with a microfiber cloth. I know, I know, this is definitely not the best way to hang up film. When I ordered the kit I forgot to include proper film drying clips so I had to improvise. The drying happened in the most dust free area in the house which is our shower. It took 4 hours before the film was completely dried. Then I brought the negatives to the lab for scanning as soon as possible because I was really looking forward to seeing the results from this little experiment. We have images on film and I am absolutely thrilled that I am able to develop black and white film myself. I got this camera for 30 euros which is about 35 dollars and that included the lens and a brand new battery. Let's see if this camera doesn't leak any light and if it is actually capable in combination with myself to produce nice images. Absolutely beautiful. All right, that concludes this video. If you have any suggestions for hobbies or crafts for me to try out, please let me know by dropping me a comment down below. Uh, the next video will be another leather working video. If you have liked watching this video, please let me know by hitting the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss any future videos. That's it for now. I'd like to thank you for watching. Bye bye.